I quit the HOA and my home doubled in value, posted by Gerdon too. About 20 years ago, my uncle acquired and bought an apartment in a new fancy condo. Each floor was separated in two apartments, except for the top floor, which was a single apartment more than double the size, with a private attic. All other units had a storage area in the basement. He got the top floor. The building had a large common hall and a large yard all around it, so the owners decided to create an HOA to maintain the common areas and protect the property value. My uncle has always been an independent man, so he wasn't keen on the idea, but he recognized it was necessary. However, he proposed an article in the statute allowing any member to recede from the HOA by paying a contribution and entering a limited agreement. People under this contract would not be in the HOA, but would be required to contribute to common expenses, like light, cleaning, administration, and so on, and maintenance, although in this case the HOA was required to confront their respective quotes for the job before proceeding. Since the votes were based on surface owned, and he thus had the swing vote, the rule was included in the statute. A couple of years go by without a hitch, and the HOA works as planned. A couple more units are sold, and everything is fine and dandy. Enter Karen. My uncle describes Karen as your worst high school teacher with a resting bee face like she was constantly smelling sewage. In reality, she was a plain woman in her 50s, dirty blonde, single, and a pocket dog and two cats, with a mildly annoyed expression frozen on her face and the fashion sense of Dolores Umbridge. Although after starting reading Reddit posts, I'm having a hard time not superimposing the classic Karen hairstyle on her. She was one of the original owners, but never had much interaction with the others. The first time my uncle took any notice of her was when she tried to introduce a rule preventing children from playing in the common hall because their rowdiness and the prospective damage they could cause might decrease property value. My uncle didn't like participating in the meetings, and he didn't have kids, yet, but that time he intervened, saying that he'd rather have happy kids around, even if that meant losing a bit of value, and proposed creating an emergency fund for the accidental damage instead. Karen was outvoted. While they were leaving the conference room, she threw a look at him like she was about to breathe fire on him. He disliked and distrusted her from that moment on. Karen tried several times to pass more restrictive rules, but she kept getting outvoted, even thanks to my uncle's double vote. But at the same time, she was doing something else. She was buying additional units and forcing her rules onto her tenants, including those regarding the common areas. So that meant that her tenant's kids couldn't play with the other kids in the common hall. For instance, this one was nearly impossible to enforce and it did lead to complaints. Over time, thanks to her by now four votes, Karen got a seat in the HOA. That was an alarm bell for my uncle, who filed to leave the HOA, as per his own article, on the same day. And not a moment too soon, as that article was cancelled even before his request was processed. The HOA then initially denied his request, and he had to sue and go to arbitration to prove that he had filed his request before the rule was expunged. But from that moment, he was free. Over the next couple of years, he had to go to arbitration twice more, once because the HOA demanded payment for a renovation without giving him the chance to present an alternate quote, and once because Karen and her newfound clique kept harassing him with fines that he didn't have to pay. He won both times, and Karen was beyond hate. Every time they met each other, she looked at him with such a contempt that he actually started fearing for his safety. In this period, Karen's increasingly restrictive rules had caused a high turnover, both of tenants and of owners. Even if everything was still in pristine condition, and Karen was very good at that, the HOA rules were a hard sell. This had decreased the value of the apartments a lot, and Karen used this to buy even more lots. She ended up with six total. When my aunt got pregnant, they decided that the condo was not really kid-friendly anymore so they decided to sell. 
As I mentioned, the property value had dropped in recent years, but evidently not my uncle's apartment. When he put it on the market, he advertised it as free from the local HOA. He ended up selling it to one of the former residents for almost double the price for square foot than any other apartment in the building. Happy end? <laughs> but wait, there's more. A couple of weeks after moving, my uncle received a call from the very distraught new owner saying that the members of the HOA are harassing him and that Karen has threatened to sue him because the HOA has a new rule that all new owners must sign up for the HOA. My uncle verbatim said, so you're not part of the HOA and you don't need to give a crap about the rules they make. The new owner pauses as he processes the information. <laughs> yes. They chatted a bit and the new owner, after enduring for years, was quite happy about the prospect of screwing with Karen and the powerless HOA. Update. How come the building didn't have a board already? Someone asked. Well, apparently the company that built the condo had gone belly up sometime earlier with the building virtually complete and the company that liquidated it wasn't really concerned with stuff like that only recovering money fast. That left the buyers to manage the property by themselves or they were delegated to do so. One commenter, Bank4, suspects that Karen had an evil plan all along. Unethical life pro tip. Join a building with an HOA, consolidate power and pass increasingly draconian rules until everyone wants out. Buy up all the apartments at a discount as the rats flee the ship. Once you own the whole building, dissolve the HOA and sell the units at a profit. That's a very interesting point of view. I'll ask whether she ended up buying even more units and update if I get an answer. No, Karen didn't get any more lots. Underwhelming, I know. A bit of a caller note though. Due to the high turnover, not many people know about my uncles a while after they moved. All they knew was that the owner of the big apartment on the top floor, they tell me it's called a penthouse, was not subject to the HOA. In the time that he lived there, a lot of rumors had him as some kind of big shot, either in politics or in crime. Great job, Uncle, standing up to the Karen who tried to run over everybody else, but you stopped it and left a legacy for that apartment. Awesome job. Beat the HOA with their own rules, posted by Rakshas. I recently bought a house in a new development. I knew there was an HOA before going in, but unfortunately, due to my personal circumstances and how hard it is to find a house here in Florida, I had no choice about the matter as much as I loathe HOAs. It's my intention to put up with their BS for two to three years, dig myself out and move far away to a place that's never heard about HOAs. This being a new community, the builder is currently responsible for a lot of questionable decisions. One being planting a magnolia tree in the backyards of all the houses. For anyone that does not know, Magnolia trees grow big, 30 to 40 feet in height is considered normal. Now this being Florida, I didn't want such a huge tree in the yard near my house, especially during hurricane season. The builder said I would have to take it up with the HOA to replace the tree, as the area that I live in requires a tree in the backyard. Okay, no problem. I moved in and sent a request through the HOA property management website to replace the magnolia tree with the dwarf citrus tree. May as well get some fruits if I must have a tree in the backyard. They responded, no, I can only replace the tree from their approved list, conveniently attached. I scoured their list, not a single fruit in the list. I was beyond ticked. I read that list up and down, even put it through ChatGPT to see if I was missing anything. No fruit tree or plants. Okay, how about insect repellent plants? None of those either. To say I was beyond ticked is putting it mildly. I had read their CCNR before moving in, so I had an idea of what I was getting into. I stewed on it for a couple of days and I was deciding to get a shrub from their approved list when I read their CCNR one more time. I found this gem. 4.58, Florida friendly and drought tolerant plants and landscaping materials. Notwithstanding any provision to the contrary in the governing documents, the association shall not be permitted to prohibit the use of Florida friendly or drought tolerant plants and landscaping materials within the community. 
I copied it and sent it to the property management company saying that I would like to replace the magnolia plant with a Florida friendly plant as per the above section in the CCNR. Radio silence for a few days. I do believe I broke their petty little brains. Then I got the notice that my request was approved. I will gleefully go rip that magnolia tree out of the yard now and plant a grapefruit tree. I have since spoken with some of my new neighbors and they have all expressed a desire to remove the magnolia tree from their yards for various reasons. I will gleefully point out the section of the CCNR that they should read. This neighbor just took down the HOA by reading the terms and conditions. Way to go, man. Garage door clicker stolen. HOA trying to make me cover for the replacement by Hopeful Outreacher. Okay, long one. About three months ago, the garage door of our condo broke and the HOA fixed it. Except now, the door is only capable of closing on its own without giving the ability for the residents to close manually. So no one waits for the door to actually close and drive off. Because of this change, our garage gets broken into all the time, and the shack that is next to our garage spot is usually open and all of its contents are placed all around. About two months ago, the previous board quit and couldn't find a third, so they urged everyone to volunteer. I ended up volunteering. A few weeks after being voted into the board, another break-in happened, and my garage door opener was stolen. I talked to the board and we all agreed that it was a security issue to have an opener out in the wild. I told them that I could take care of things as this seemed like a small enough issue to get my feet wet. Our HOA manager kept not responding to my emails but still kept opening emails right away and if and when he responds, he responds in small unhelpful phrases weeks later. Our manager has a long history of doing that. I don't think she has ever replied to a single of my emails promptly. After about a month, I resigned from the board for unrelated reasons. Work was picking up and I needed the time back. It has been a month since I asked to resign and they finally officially voted me out yesterday. The manager has not been responding to my emails still, even though I have receipts that she has indeed read every single one of my emails. The board now has decided that the issue is not important and wants to charge me $500 for the replacement clicker. After resigning, the resident living across from me told me that they had a stalker and that someone had installed a GPS tracker on her car. It feels to me they are trying to skirt their duties as members in order to save a dime and have me deal with the door by myself even though they were the ones who created the problem by installing a cheap garage door that does not secure the building. I also feel like the HOA manager is singling me out in this situation. In the two years that I've lived here, she has never replied to a single one of my emails, often making problems worse due to them not being resolved in time. Thoughts? Not sure what to do next. Here's some updates. You don't need to be voted out to resign. Your written resignation is enough and effective immediately or effective per a date and time specified by you in writing. Was your garage door opener stolen during one of the break-ins? Because if so, I'd ask for the paragraph in the condo and HOA documents that gives them the authority to charge the victim of the HOA's negligence for the cost to repair the damage caused by the HOA's negligence. An OP updated. It was. We took photos of the events and contacted the board member immediately. We found a wrench in our car, found the shack to be opened second time at that point, and in addition, we noticed there was an opened box next to the garage door. Man OP, if going to the HOA doesn't fix this, let's go to the cops instead. The HOA board president is a hoarder and stores trash under his staircase. Posted by No Organization 1286. My HOA is horrible. They do not want election rules. They refuse to take accountability for giving fraudulent financials and gave a crook of a manager a raise instead of canceling his contract. At the last meeting, they were talking about fining people for leaving items under their storage boxes instead of inside. Mind you, the inside of the storage boxes has leaks that the HOA has not fixed for more than three years. I'm generally a peaceful person, but this HOA has me livid. I can feel my blood boil. I snapped and I lost my mind. So I decide to do a cleanup of the property. 
I went first to where the contractor left behind their trash, the unusable remnants of a fountain that was removed more than two years ago. I collected the musty towel that one of the previous board members, who doesn't let others use the spa, leaves for himself when he goes swimming. I put that in the trash. I took debris of planters. I took the sliding door that has been leaning against the building for literally one year. I removed the luggage that was left for someone to take and I walked to Goodwill. And then I did the worst thing. I went beneath the staircase in the common area where the president stores her items that no longer fit in the condo. I knew it was hers, but I knew I could pretend it was trash. She had plastic containers in trash bags, like ate a grocery store salad, washed the container, and kept it. She has foam for going under the carpet. She had broken glass. I took it all. I went to the elevator room next, and I removed the passive-aggressive rules that the previous board had left in the entryway, covering the whole bulletin board. They were not allowing others to post and had all these rules that were in plastic, but had been there so long that they had faded. I ripped it all out. I threw it away. It was like the best feeling in the world, like a drug. And then she had a meltdown and sent me an email called cease and desist from placing junk in front of complex. It has accusations that I was collecting personal materials and called the association's trash company. I think it's hilarious and I know they will not be happy with me and I lost political power, but honestly, FHOA, what a scam. I was so responsible, I put some in the trash and I made a pile to pull out my car and take the bulky items to the dump. This was unacceptable to them, seen as wicked and mean-spirited. The secretary said, if I ever vandalism his property again, he will file a police report. This comment says, boy, you sure showed them doing all that hard work for free. But was it worth it to do it for free to help get back at the HOA? This commenter with a Joe Gatto profile picture, love Impractical Jokers, I've seen Joe live before, says, post a camera that points to the stairs in case she tries to store more things and tries to say it's yours. No proof like video proof, right? OP has the guts to take out the trash. The trash in this case is the HOA. You should follow your own rules, posted by Jake Senpai. Anyway, so when I was two, my dad bought the house that I grew up in. It was a major fixer upper. In total, he probably put a hundred grand into fixing it up, if not more. So this is where the story comes in. The city building inspector informed my dad that because it was documented that he spent over $50,000 improving his property, he would have to build a sidewalk, but only in front of his house. The expense would come out of his pocket. If anyone injured themselves on the sidewalk that abruptly started and abruptly ended, he'd be responsible for that as well along with upkeep. It would also cut about three feet into the front yard and would permanently lower the property value. Now at the time that this happened, the city had completely renovated a park playground costing well over the $50,000, and this was public knowledge. Also, the park was within viewing distance of our house and it had two historic trees within feet of the road. My dad wrote a letter to the mayor's office and worded the cover letter in a way such that they would have to publicly read the entire letter out loud during a public meeting. The letter basically said to lead by example and put in a sidewalk at the newly renovated park, meaning they'd have to cut down the two historic trees. The public was outraged. After that, the building inspector basically let him renovate the house however he liked, and there is still no sidewalk. I love this malicious compliance. They need to follow their own rules and set their own example. Get a man. Issues a fine without warning for street parking and having a memorial service with updates from OP. Posted by Zethier99. We just moved into a non-gated HOA community in Florida. We had also moved my mother in with us to take care of her. Unfortunately, she passed the next week. Fast forward a week and we have a few family members over for a small memorial service. Next week, we get a letter from the HOA lawyer, who is also the president's nephew. It states, we were being fined $400 by the lawyer for him sending us the certified letter. The letter stated, even though the county owns the roads, we disturbed the HOA president by having people park on the street. 
I've searched our CNRs and they do say no long-term street parking, but the HOA has been sued in the past over parking and lost. Not sure what to do. Thinking about making a bar complaint about the lawyer's actions and not giving us the required HOA board hearing for our violation. Beyond that, I'm not sure what to do. HOAs suck and I'm stupid for buying into an HOA community. Commenter asked OP, if they are public streets, then anyone can park there, and where do they come up with 400 bucks? And it's for disturbing the HOA president? Are they more special than anyone else? I don't think on so many levels. And OP replies, 400 was for the attorney's time to send me the letter. I asked about a hearing with the board and was told it's a civil issue and there would be no hearing. I'll see if I can post the letter later today. I'm going to post the letter in emails when I redact some personal info. Sheriff stated they own the road enforcement and they have laws in our county about anyone else enforcing traffic and parking. The whole deal is a crap show. They lost a $30,000 legal battle last year, come to find out. Similar situation according to county documents. Funny they didn't learn the first time. With all the HOA stories I read on this channel, do they ever learn? Probably not. The HOA finds me and takes me to court, but I'm not part of the HOA. Click the video on your screen, you don't want to miss the crazy fallout of this one, and I'll see you there.